Uh, evening, folks. Dr. Freedom here with the Times from Dr. News. News from in and around the universe that may or may not affect you on such a deep emotional level. It could ooze out your ears and into your soul. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course, there's a lot of weirdness going on online these days and all that. But like I said, I just choose to ignore it. If there's people online saying things to you, you know, accusing you of things or accusing your friends of things, your best option is this mute block ignore and a lot of people just don't seem to get why i do this and it's like because ch chances are you've been doing things online i don't agree with or you associate with people i really don't talk to and it's just that's the way it has to be and you know you got to do what you got to do and like i said it's the same thing with the folks who are out there screaming about a certain hashtag is going to cause spoilers. Don't type in the hashtag. Or if there's someone posting spoilers and you know they post spoilers, ignore them. But a lot of folks just don't use common sense and they wonder why I kind of lose my shit. Because it's not like you don't, you know, these people show up in your living room, I'll put a gun to your head and say, read this. But the, role, no, the only reason I'm segueing with that tonight is because here's one of the more infamous ones that the BBC did. And I've talked about this multiple times. Rachel Talay on the BBC revealing John Sims spoiler. And here would have been the best super cliffhanger, bam, surprise ever if they had just not put John Sim into the damn trailer. Nobody knew who he was on the set that day. Nobody. And they just blew it. Okay, direct, all right, director Rachel Talay has been chatting about the BBC's decision to openly reveal the return of John Sim in Doctor Who Series 10. All right, like that, spoilers. If you haven't watched World Enough in Time and all that by now, I'm sorry. But right at the start of Doctor Who Series 10, the BBC decided to play its hand early and reveal that John Sim was returning to the series. It was a disappointing reveal given that Sim wouldn't actually appear until the penultimate episode. And I'm sorry in the last video, I did kind of screw up because I kind of meant the finale as a whole. But I did say last episode. You know, at your own world enough in time. Now, why couldn't they try to keep it under wraps? Many of us wondered. It turned out John Sim seemed to be wondering at himself. Now, Rachel Talay, who directed World Enough in Time, you know, has given an interesting interview to the excellent Radio Free Scaro. And she admits, too, that she was surprised that Sim's return was given away. We were incredibly careful with John Sim because he was playing the character Razor. When he was outside, we were able to keep him under wraps and undercover. We did all the things that we could to make sure that it wasn't spoiled. We left shooting with it being a secret. We, you know, we left, and they did. No, even those dirty DWSR people did not know who that was. Nobody did. And don't believe M.W. if he tells you he did. Okay, that's a load. Um, matter of fact, he claims to know everything, including, you know, all that he knew. Uh, I'm not going to go into But she added, what surprised me was that I thought this was going to ruin it for so many people because they're going to know that Razor's him from the very beginning because they're going to be waiting for him. But a lot of people, Real Who fans, said that they were surprised and didn't immediately go, that's John Sim. They're, they're screwing with you, Rachel, and I'll tell you why. One of the things I did, you know, like I said, when I was researching the whole Jody thing, and I watch reaction videos sometimes to see how people react to Doctor Who, and you can tell who the real ones are easy. I'm sorry, but the guy who gets up and walks away like this from his camera every time someone even farts on the screen, that's not real. I'm sorry it isn't. You know, stuff like that, genuine emotions. After a while, you can, you can spot them. You can. And just about every single person goes, that must be John Sim. So the only people to blame for really spoiling anything in Series 10 was the BBC themselves. They shot themselves in the foot with some stupid-ass idea that maybe if we put him up in the front of the series, we'll get ratings up a bit. And, you know, by the time he doesn't show up, you get all the way to the second to last episode, of course they know he's going to pop up because you've shown him at the beginning of the season, you morons. <sighs> okay, what will the 13th Doctor's first words be after she regenerates? And this is, they're kind of taking a little poll here, a little vote. And they throw you some options out. 
let's go to it. Still not ginger. It's about time. Other, you know, I typed in myself. I was like, I seem to be missing something. Um, chromosomes. I've got the chromosomes. I don't like the color. Sorry, that's too much of take our Capaldi, and I'm northern again. So, still not ginger seems to be in the lead right here. So, bam, bam, bam. If you're interested in this, here it is. Yeah, there you go. Moving on. Oh yeah, here's another look at the first doctor cover, and this is a better image. Um, they also got one here if you want to snag onto it. Wham, wham, wham. There you go. Um, so that way you can get a closer look at what's in it. This is Doctor Who issue, sorry, Doctor Who magazine issue number five one nine, and it'll be out this Thursday. Um, some folks may have gotten it early in the mail if you have a subscription, but so interview with, of course, the old, the first doctor from the set of the Christmas special, AKA David Bradley. And, you know, so some, some nifty stuff in there. Plus, like I said, that cover is just so damned awesome, man. That is brilliant. All right. First doctor feels great horror when meeting Peter Capaldi's doctor in the doctor Christmas special. And this course, Mal fat Peter Capaldi and David Bradley drop more hints about what to expect in twice upon a time. All right. So, Boom, 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 boom. Now, speaking of a special Dr. Mind the Scenes documentary, The Finale Falls, episode writer and parting show owner Steve Moffat dropped a few hints about the upcoming clashes between Capaldi's doctor and the 12th, well, his 12th doctor and, of course, his very first incarnation. Um, Bradley is such a good swap for William Hartnell. He looks so like him and he can also and can so capture that part. We could actually have an effect William Hartnell returning to Doctor Who and witness his great horror to what he has become. The first doctor meeting the current doctor, this according to Bradley himself, it's just so way out there. I'm glad Stephen Moffat thought of it and wrote such a brilliant story, but it's something I would never have imagined. And speaking, of course, more generally about the episode, Peter Capaldi added, it's nice to have conclusions. I think, I think it's nice for stories to end, but Doctor Who never ends. So, boom, boom, boom. You know, it's like I said, we're still quite a ways away out well month and a half now just about ain't it from of course the christmas special and see Moffat, doctor television directors and more and this is a nice interview here with uh Denna geek um ahead of the release of the series San dvd it lands on monday and is available it was available digitally now outgoing showrunner steve Moffat did select few They'll select a few interviews to chat about the show, and he saved one for us. And it covers some very interesting stuff right here that they talk about. You know, do, 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 do. It's, like I said, it's a nice, good, real run there. If you're interested, you want to take a look at this, boom, I'll leave you the link below in the description box as usual. So it's a good interview with Moffat. Denny Geek always does good interviews. Okay. And here's that bit about I was talking about yesterday. See, Moffat RTD have untitled Doctor Who hooks coming out. And Okay, now this was spotted by Girl Letters, boom, 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 on, on Twitter. A new series of Doctor Who Target novelizations look like they'll be hit, they're heading into stores the 2nd of April, 2018. And here are some of the high profile authors who are involved. And of course, this is our, we've got RTD, Jenny Colgan, Steve Moffat, and James Goss, just to name a few. All right, it's unclear at the moment whether these are adaptations of their stories or whether they've written novelizations themselves. Both are up for pre-order. Bum, 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 right there. So go look into this if you're interested in novelizations. Um, I had an article the other night that said it's going to be novelizing some of the new series episodes, you know, of the new era. So, you know, boom, boom, boom. Once again, folks, I can't stress this enough. If there are people online who just mock, intimidate, or badger you, block them. Don't give them the time of day. Don't reply to them. They don't know you. You know who you are. And I've told this to people before. I know who I am. And I know what I do. And if you want to go out there and make up stories about me, go right on ahead. But when you start attacking friends of mine unnecessarily, yeah, I turn into a bulldog on you. I really do. Because some of the accusations that are flying around are just beyond ludicrous. And now it's just you've got some people out there who are pissing gas on the fire in order to get some kind of public attention, and it's just gotten ridiculous. Um, I can't even describe it. So I'm just giving you some advice out there, and this is advice that will save you a lot of headaches in life. 
a lot of heartbreak and a whole lot of just upset stomachs. Mute, block, ignore. If people are doing something online that you know it's attacking you, attacking others, or just don't give them the time of day. You've got the tools, baby. Use them. Good night. Take care. Else, oh, by the way, I wanted to announce I'll be leaving YouTube as of about the year 2574. Sorry, I just don't know what brought that on. I was going to joke, do a joking video about it, but I can't do it. I don't, I'm not that mean. So, good night, folks. Take care. <laughs>